So thank you very much uh, for being here. Uh, uh, we actually I begin from the statement that uh, was said today about Iran. That was one of them was yours, and I think one of them was hers. So um, I just checked uh, what was the thing that was spoken about today in the Human Rights Council up there. I show you the photo of the person who was, um, I think I can make it more, right? So that you can see her, maybe you can also uh, see the text that is written there, those of you who can read Persian. It is written that um, I am not very uh, straight, my head is not very straight, I'm uh, really not happy about that, that my hands are not straight and so on, but I just went to uh, renew my ID card in Iran because the ID cards are going to be renewed and then the person on the registry office just said, why do you need an ID card? Why the need of an ID card? I mean, um, we are in such situation. And then we have um, this uh, nice report, midterm report of UPR of Iran, uh, which is uh, about 13 pages of this report goes on persons with disabilities with beautiful numbers written there that things have been done and has been done. But, but if you just go through this, uh, uh, these uh, lines, then you will find, even though in this report, all kind of prejudice against persons with disability, disabilities could be read between the lines, so that um, when it is spoken about uh, persons with disabilities, the first thing that they speak is prevention uh, from uh, genetic disorder, prevention of prevention of disabilities. So, uh, and then uh, you see when in the uh, laws, in the uh, media, you hear all kind of words which are very much prejudiced against persons with disabilities. People who get all this information uh, begin to react also in a way that is not really correct. I don't think uh, personally that the person in registry has been told not to give persons with disabilities the ID card or just uh, humiliate just them or something like that. But then this, it, this is the culture that has gone inside persons who are at the position of power at that moment. I mean, and then she's also written here that she has also heard that people have told her why does she need uh, actually higher education in the university that is not, for her it's not actually very reasonable. Um, and she was very sad about all these issues. Um, I just wanted to show you, um, we have all kinds of information that goes to the uh, international community about how the streets has become this uh, kind of several lines for uh, people which has problems with eyesight and so on. But uh, just uh, if you can take the picture, you can see that how the, these lines go to places where, uh, 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 where are, there are life dangers actually, <laughs> if you fell in this water canal or if you go to this uh, uh, column, you know, electricity column, or you come direct to a closing uh, actually. Uh, the same thing, you can see how uh, persons with disabilities can get in a bus. So uh, even though the uh, bright of the doors are not uh, passing to the wheelchair, so this is as well a problem that uh, people have. So um, going up to the stairs uh, are the problems that we have heard lots of people who have tried to reach the courts, for example, uh, to follow their cases. 
uh, could not even reach the court. We just had, uh, um, it was written on social media about a lady who has traveled 150 kilometers from her village to the uh, to a city and could it, couldn't get in the court because it was in the third floor and there was no lift or ramp or whatever and nobody could help her to go up so she just missed her court because uh, nobody could take her to the third floor as well. So, uh, but what is very important it seems for uh, the uh, government of Iran and the state is a hijab. So they have made a kind of program, a cultural program, uh, which they have shown a chador, which is specialized for women with disabilities. So uh, there are not, as uh, uh, Mary John said uh, here, uh, there are not enough budget to uh, implement all this new uh, comprehensive law because uh, because of this budget uh, reduction uh, it is not implemented but there are enough budget to uh, make chadors for persons with disabilities so um, I have I have these photos so that you can have a little bit uh, more clear idea, you can see the idea of what is happening really in Iran. We have lots of um, uh, uh, ways that go, the uh, persons who are on, on food can go up and uh, go through bridges and then go at the other side of street dogs. Uh, they are so small and narrow that, uh, and there are only steps, no uh, <coughs> lift or something like that. So the people, uh, have to help these persons with disabilities who are on the chair and uh, they have to go from upside downside and there was a film I couldn't feel uh, find it in the short time today to bring it up here uh, I've seen it some days before and then it's really very difficult uh, that people uh, who pass by help persons with disabilities who have movement disabilities and can't um, do that for themselves. So uh, what I wanted to still go through was um, on the uh, training courses and on the case of um, one issue that happened actually uh, in the last year. Um, uh, I don't know if you remember that uh, we had also a panel up uh, here in Human Rights Council and also in the committee uh, they asked Iran about emergency cases. So what happens to persons with disabilities in emergency cases if there is an earthquake, if there is, uh, uh, okay, what happened here was uh, the beginning of the war with, uh, in Syria and lots of people who were uh, on food uh, moving outside the cities. That was the reason that they brought up the whole idea. But then on Iran, although Iran doesn't have a war, but we had lots of floodings and um, earthquakes in Iran. So, um, and then uh, the uh, Iranian mission here, and also uh, the persons, the, the delegation who came for the committee on the rights of persons with disability that Iran was in the program of the work of committee. Uh, they said that we have had, we have had lots of um, workshops, lots of uh, things have been shown to families, to authorities, so everybody knows how to go through these issues and that the families will never, and the, pers the people in Iran will never leave the persons with disabilities back. So they will always take them with themselves. And then um, one of the persons who was here is an MP of Iran, who is on wheelchair himself. And um, he was defending this issue, exactly this issue, uh, in the committee uh, for the um, rights of persons with disabilities. And then 
uh, this uh, terrorist attack to the parliament happened. I don't know if you all remember that issue as well. Uh, there was an attack to the parliament. Uh, it, was, it didn't happen that they reached the main cell where the MPs were there, but then there was an emergency evacuation of the uh, main salon of the uh, parliament. And then this MP who was here and said that everybody knows about that was left back and he was the last person who was evacuated. And he said, when I went out, everybody else was already gone. Nobody was in the yard. Nobody was nowhere else. I was the last person. And then uh, some, uh, some of the cleaners took him out of the parliament itself. So uh, that means that uh, we are here confronted with very, very wide reports showing that everything is good in Iran, but the reality is unfortunately, unfortunately, the reality is uh, not as uh, it is uh, written and said in all the reports that are presented here in the Human Rights Council and uh, other um, human rights bodies that work on different issues, especially on persons with disabilities. Thank you very much.